said to the team, it wasn't the ugliest win I ever had, but it's, it's going to be, it's in the top ten. But the, uh, the ugliest win I ever had was still beautiful. It's just, we just find a way to win a basketball game. And I'm proud of the guys that they did that. I mean, you know, uh, we shoot 39%. And uh, we just grinded it. You know, we just grinded it and grinded it and grinded it. And obviously we had no answer for Mackey. Uh, McKnight, he was just living in the lanes, was 31 points. I'm obviously not happy with that. Our defensive effort on the basketball was, uh, was worse than poor this evening. But we went to the zone, and we did a good job in the zone in the second half, and, and we made some timely shots. And, uh, you know, on a night when we really struggled to shoot the basketball, 3 of 18 from 3, we defended them well from 3. They were 3 of 22, and they were, they were an exceptional shooting team as well. So some good things, I think, you know, we just gutted it out on the backboards, plus 17 on the backboards, and uh, only 12 turnovers, which is, which is a good thing, too. So, uh, survive in advance. You know, we got a week off, we play next Saturday. We got a whole, just about a full week here to work on the things we need to work on, and we will get better with those, but it's, it's still early in the season. But, uh, you know, finding a way to win games at home, we didn't, you know, a game like this we would have lost, in my opinion, last year or the year prior. With issue we don't lose, and, and it's because of the maturity of these two guys, and uh, you know even John Severe on the night when he really struggled shooting the basketball, he's out there and he's extending the court because people are worried about him shooting the basketball. You know, I think Jake Fay gave us great minutes. You know, in a pinch here, Travion's at the hospital, finger in his eye. Ryan Canty got real sick at halftime, uh, so uh, we were as light as we could be on the baseline. He gave us great minutes and. Then we were able to come back with Brian Smith, who really got it going in the beginning of the second half for us, and all of a sudden picks up that fourth foul, and that was a kill for us. But uh, it was a, definitely a team effort. It's not to have a third guy step up this time. It was Ryan Rooms with eight and 12 to go up to 42 and 24. Yeah. Yeah. Was that especially how light you were up front? Yeah, it was huge. And he, and he stayed out of foul trouble. I was concerned. You know, we were like, man, we're going to really be playing small ball of rooms to get some foul trouble. <laughs> But I thought he did a good job, uh, you know, and he played within himself, with the exception of a couple of tough shots he tried to make. I thought he did a very good job rebounding the basketball. He had a presence in there, and, and you know, Kempton's a heck of a player. He's, he's a good little player, that young guy, and, and so is Chuka. So uh, he, he did a good job. He competed. Can you talk about how much you rely on these two to rebound the ball and Brian is in because it's house? Mm -hmm. Look, you know, the term we use is we rebound to run. We can't run if we don't rebound the basketball. We can't run on mix. When your opponent's scoring and the ball's going through the hoop, you can't run. So you want to run? Everyone wants to run. Well, you better defend your tails off and you better go rebound the basketball. And with the exception of that seven-minute stretch at the end of the half where McMahon came off the flat ball screen a hundred times and got to the rim, I thought other than that we were doing a pretty good job defending them, but uh, that forced us to have to go zone. And, uh, you know, to have these guys, they're, they're more than capable of double-digit rebounds. And you know, one of the things we told them when we recruited them, the guards we've had, the great guards we've coached over the years, the Lawrence Stokes, the Speedy Claxton, the Charles Jenkins, Carlos Rivera, they were double-double guys. And it wasn't always assists. They go rebound the basketball. They fill up box scores. They're complete basketball players. And these guys have got to understand that's what they need to do every night. But those are impressive numbers when you look at 12, 11, and 13. And some here is just a matter of being in the right place at the right time. Uh, I think it's a little bit of both. Coach always say be a best defense to be in there. Guard, he said guards, guards rebound. So I think I've always been a good defender in my eyes. My dad talked about me because he played defense. So I think it's good for both. Tom, if you can follow up on that, based on the last year and how well he's he's improved, mm -hmm. where where would you say he's at from this point a year ago to now? Uh, much much improved. I mean, I, I think the growth he had last February was was uh, very impressive. And he had a great offseason and worked hard. You know, I just got to get him to play uh, with, with, with great intensity for 40 minutes. You know, he's a, he's a very graceful athlete. Sometimes it doesn't look like he's playing hard, but he is. But he's got he's to realize that you know, he's good enough to finish plays. He's good enough to get fouled and still score the ball. He's good enough for us to put him on the best offensive player and lock him up. So uh, it's all part of the growth process as a sophomore. But John, I mean, he just seems so unfazed by when he's just not shots. What are you telling there? Coach Duke was telling us just next play, next play. Yeah, next play, man. Keep shooting. Just keep shooting. Uh, you know, look, he's 0 for 10 for 3 tonight. He's going to be 9 since 9 for 10. You've seen it. So, uh, you know, it's going to be like that for a freshman. He's got to, uh, he can never lose. Shooters can't lose their confidence. I get on these guys for not shooting enough. 
and for not playing hard enough to get looks at threes, you know. There's times they get a two and I'm like, that should have been a three. If you made the cut harder, you could have had a three. Because they can shoot the ball as well from beyond the strike as they do you know, inside of it. And, and John and Brian are the same. So, uh, you know, that's why we're playing this way. We're playing this way because we want to have that firepower on the floor. Brandon, talk about the first half. They were, Lehigh was getting to the basket, like no one was even touching them. In the second half, you play zone force from there, hands up. Was it the hands were up, communication? What was the yeah, issue? Then? Talking more, and, um, in the first half, the coach was saying the last seven minutes, we never get into the lane. I feel like we didn't have much communication on the drives and things like that, so that's how we get into the basket easier. But the second half, when we came out on the zone, started talking a little bit more, getting some stops, making sure that everyone knew they needed to be. You know, we just be able to get stops and then get out. You see, Ryan Smith hit the two threes to get our confidence going early in the second half, and we just went on from there. Brandon, defending McKnight today, did you see more of a difference in him this year versus last year now that he doesn't have the column out there? Yeah, 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 real different. Uh, I mean, I've played him for like three years now, so uh, I see that he's more aggressive without CJ McCollum, and uh, definitely can score the ball. You see that. And, uh, I just think that's just more of it. I mean, he, also, he has a lot of shooters on his team, so now he's just the main guy who has to score the ball and be the leader on his team, and it seems like he is. Good, guys. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it.